Hi everybody, welcome to Facebook Land again. It's Paul. Aaron. We're going to shut up and get out of the way. That's right. We had a review last night. It was a great review. And uh, we wanted to get up. We've got the entire cast here. And if you haven't read it yet, they're going to read it for you. So, All happy right, Sunday. Away. Here you go. The epic theatrical production, The Hunchback of Notre Dame at Carroll Cultural Center, can only be accurately described in this single word. The beautiful set, ominous lighting, unique sound, and special effects Subtle color changes, live orchestra, and colorful, colorful eye-catching costumes. Wow. The use of upper balconies to flood the theater with voice. Wow. The expert <laughs> choreography and the actors using the, not only the stage, but going directly in and out of the audience. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the voices from Aaron. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Punctuating the end of every song doesn't begin to cover the beauty of these voices. There's a saying, go big or go home, for the 10th anniversary of the center, for the very first time combining the talents of 44 members of Moss Community Theater and 22 chorus and band members under, under the direction of Mary Jo Hahn and the Carolwood Winds Concert Band under the direction of Joshua Hobbs. <laughs> Directors Paul Berg and Aaron Washington win. <laughs> Despite music from the Disney film, the musical focuses on the darker side of Victor Hugo's book. The subject matter throughout the production is heavy. Bullying, abuse, emotional manipulation, physical abuse, love and lust. The scenic elements designed by Paul lend to the beauty of the production. An eight foot by eight foot stained glass window as a center color-changing focal point on stage. Stained glass windows to the left and right of the stage. Gargoyles hanging from the balconies. <laughs> oh, yes, we turn the page. <laughs> Above the audience, a singer, <clears throat> singers in the scaffolding balconies on stage and to the left and right above the audience. And grand bells hanging above the stage. And the cast entered the stage from its rear, leading to the feeling that we, the audience, were part of and immersed in the 1482 Notre Dame. The group choreography is delightful, from dancing to sword fights, and the scene changes are seamless. This show is exceptionally cast. Archdeacon Claude Frollo, played by Marcus Blake, <laughs> exudes a twisted sense of responsibility for his dying brother. He's a pious, intimidating, and hypocritical man, thinking he's doing good by keeping his deformed charge, his nephew, exiled, exiled for his entire life. Later, bathed in red light, we see the lust of a man married to God and evil in its purest form when rebuked by the beautiful gypsy Esmeralda. Erica Garaka? I might say. <laughs> he wants to possess. I could be a good friend to you or also a terrible enemy, he says. Hellfire showcases the strength of his vocals. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Ryan Vince is absolutely phenomenal as the lonely boy Quasimodo. Yeah. The humpbacked nephew of the Archdeacon. Imprisoned in the bell tower, Quasimodo's friends are the stone gargoyles who come to life only when he is alone. When the Archdeacon enters, they freeze in their spaces. A special recognition to the ensemble in the hooded gray robes for being able to stand perfectly motionless for such a long time. Yeah. When Quasimodo is encouraged by the gargoyles to briefly escape his captivity to visit the city during its annual Feast of Fools, the cruelty he suffers at the hands of the villagers literally brought me to tears. In a stooped body, Ryan's facial expressions broke my heart. But when he opens his mouth and those notes waft across the expanse of the theater, words can barely do justice to the power of the man's voice. He turned my skin to goosebumps, holding the long note in heaven's light. You cannot take your eyes off Erika Grafa Garafa as a <laughs> She conveys her character strength and unconventionally but also her heart and kindness when she rescues Quasimodo from the village and befriends him. Her song and dance in Rhythm of the Tambourine is fun and invigorating. Yeah. Paul, Aaron, and Katie Costanguay, Costa <laughs> costume choice is spot on, as Red captures the passion of this beautiful statu 
statue keys, independent woman. I doubt a woman of less of lesser height could carry the role as well. As Esmeralda stands toe to toe, eye to eye, with some powerful man and doesn't flinch. Yes, girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> The pure beauty of Erica's voice it is showcased in God Help the Ausgast and At the Top of the World with Ryan. High school senior Seth Alderman plays the Archdeacon's soldier Phoebus, who has fallen for the gypsy and must choose between love and disobeying the Archdeacon or remaining steadfast in his assigned duties to bring her to him. Another goosebump-worthy moment is someday between Erica and Seth. When the voices rise to crescendo, it is a breathtaking moment. Before the cast could link hands to take their bow, the audience was on their feet greeting this performance with a rousing standing ovation. Undeniably, you must experience the pageantry of Paul and Aaron's The Hunchback of Notre Dame. But come understanding, this isn't your light-hearted Disney film with And They All Lived Happily Ever After. <laughs> All right, and here's the rest of the cast. Woo! <laughs> yeah, he just went into the band. Thank you very much. Tickets are still available for Friday and Sunday, but they are going quick, folks. Thank you very much. Bye.